Hi everyone, my name is Daisy and I'm a physics and math tutor with Lanterner Education. Today's video is going to be all about some parts of chapter 4.4 and 9.2 to 9.3 and the parts of those chapters that relate to how light interferes when it passes through different setups or slits. So the first half of this video is going to be relevant to both standard level and higher level students and the second half is going to be um, important only to higher level students so I'll make it clear when we get to that point between the two. So let's get started. So in terms of what the syllabus says, um, if you're a standard level student, all you need to worry about is how light interferes when it passes through a double slit setup. If you're a higher level student, you need to understand that, as well as um, the single slit interference pattern and diffraction gratings. So um, in the first thing we're going to look at is um, double slit interference. So this happens when we take light, we shine it through two slits and we see the pattern we get at the end of it. So the light that we start with must be what we call coherent and that means that there must be um, all the light must have a constant wavelength and a constant phase difference between two different sources. So when we pass it through these two slits what you can see is that the light diffracts a little bit so it's going to spread out and this means that um, light from the two different um, slits can interfere and cause this pattern. So when we get these bright spots, what it means is that at that point we've got um, a peak from one wave colliding with a peak from another wave or a trough from one wave colliding with the trough of another. So to get constructive interference, the difference in the distance that those two beams must have travelled must be a whole number of wavelengths to ensure that they are in phase when they meet and we get constructive interference. And the points where we get the dark spots is where we have what we call destructive interference. And this is where the um, waves, when they meet, are completely in antiphase. So what that means is there must be a half wavelength difference so that where we have a peak on one wave, we have a trough on the other. And therefore, the waves are going to completely cancel each other out. And when we want to describe this situation, we use the equation S is lambda capital D over small d. So in this equation, um, S is going to be um, the separation of these maxima, or these bright spots. So S would be from here, quite hard to draw in a small diagram, that distance there that we would measure with a ruler. So a distance in centimetres, metres, um, whatever you're using for your other um, quantities. Um, lambda is, of course, our wavelength. Capital D is our distance between our slits and our screen. And small d is going to be the separation of the two slits. So we normally measure this from the centre of these two slits, like so. All right, so let's look at how we would apply this to a question. So all the questions in today's video have been taken from Cognity, which is a set of online textbooks. Um, what I would really recommend is um, if you feel fairly comfortable with this content, pause the video, have a go at the question and come back to hear my explanation. I think really um, the only really way to get good at physics is to practice it. I wish there was like a magic wand and you could suddenly understand it, but really practice does make perfect. So the question tells us that monochromatic light of frequency 4.05 times 10 to the 14 hertz is incident on a double slit which has a slit separation of 0.25 millimetres. An interference pattern is seen on a screen that is 2.7 metres away from the, flip, or from the slits. So the first part asks us to explain the pattern of dark and bright fringes seen on the screen. So I think the best way to do that is using the equations that um, are given in the formula sheet, these ones um, about the path difference. So what you want to talk about here is how the bright um, fringes are caused by um, constructive interference so where the path difference is an integer number of wavelengths and the destructive interference so those dark spots are caused by um, path differences which are an integer number of wavelength plus half of a wavelength. Alright so then the second part asks us to determine the distance between the centres of bright fringes. So this is what um, the equation that we were given um, tells us. So what we want to calculate is our um, S is lambda capital D over small d. Um, but we don't know our wavelength, right? We've been given a frequency. Well that's okay though because we know that C is F lambda. So therefore our um, wavelength is going to be c divided by our frequency um, speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and our frequency we're told is 4.05 times 10 to the 14 hertz if you put that in your calculator you should get out an answer of 7.407 times 10 to the minus 7 meters
So when we put that into our equation for s, so our lambda capital D over small d, we're going to get 7.407 times 10 to the minus 7 times capital D. So that's our large distance, that's our separation from the slit to the screen. So that is 2.7. And um, small d is our um, separation of the slits. So this is it's 0.25 millimetres. And we've got to be careful. So everything we've done so far is in metres. So this must also be in metres. So this is going to be 0.25 to get from millimetres to metres. We're going to times by 10 to the power of minus 3. So I divide by 1,000. And if you put that all into your calculator, you should get 8 times 10 to the minus 3 metres which is probably easier to think about as being eight millimeters. So um, the separation of those slits then is a, just, just less than a centimeter. Okay, so this is where the standard level content ends. Uh, so standard level students, thanks for watching. And high level students, let's move on to chapter nine. Okay, so the first thing we wanna think about is single slit interference. So you might imagine if we took one of those slits away, well, why would we get interference? It doesn't make sense. We're just shining light through a hole. We just get diffraction. But actually, what's going to happen is if our slits, you know, are large enough, um, this, the light that passes through the top half of the slit is going to interfere with the light that passes through the bottom part of the slit. So we're going to get interference in much the same way as we get for um, a sort of two slit pattern. If we look at the um, pattern of intensity we get, it looks a bit like this. And it is described by this equation theta so um, instead of using like s like the distance between them here we're using an angle so what this means is if you uh, um, took the line that goes straight through your apparatus um, and you looked at it from an angle here theta this is what you would see so theta is lambda over b and um, some reason we changed um, d was our slit width slit separation even b is our slit width so this is here. So when we um, use this equation, what it tells us is the distance between the central maximum and the first minimum. This is what we would call theta. This is also the same as the separation of any two maxima here. So what's interesting about this pattern is that that central maxima is twice as wide as all these sort of smaller maxima that we get afterwards. And um, so it's much, much wider. And what's also interesting to note is that the intensity drops off really rapidly here. If we call this, our central maxima has an intensity of I0. The secondary maxima will have I0 over 20. So it will only be 5% of that I, um, intensity. And the one after that will be I0 over 50. So it drops off very rapidly as we move out from the um, central maximum. Um, so as we said, um, we can use this equation, theta is lambda over b. What this means is if we increase the slit width, we're going to decrease the width of the pattern. So we increase b, we're going to decrease theta. But also because we're increasing the width of the slit, more light is going to get through. So the whole pattern is going to have a higher intensity. We would just sort of stretch it all upwards. If you increase the wavelength, so if we increase lambda, we're going to increase theta. So again, we're going to um, make the pattern wider. And what's really cool about this is it means it's going to affect what happens if we just shine white light, which is obviously composed of the whole spectrum of the rainbow um, through a single slit. So if we do this, you get a pattern a bit like this. So you can see that in the centre here, we've got mostly white light. Um, in our sort of spectrum of light, if we think about it, we've got red, orange, um, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Red has um, a highest lambda. Violet has the lowest lambda. So what this means is that um, red is going to be had the most sort of spread out pattern, and violet and blue and the colours towards that end of the spectrum are going to be less spread out. So you can see that the first colour we see is blue, then we go through the spectrum of light to red, and then we go through it again to red. And as you keep going, um, originally you'll get quite a nice clear rainbow. But as you go further and further out, the colours are going to start overlapping with each other. So you might find, for instance, that, you know, the fourth um, red band might overlap with the fifth blue band. And therefore, you're not going to get this nice crisp pattern. So you can see even by um, this third repetition here, the colours are much less distinct than they were before. There's a bit more blurring going on. OK, um, so... Obviously, we talked about double slits before, 
but double slits are composed of two slits. So um, as well as getting the interference between those two slits, there's going to be interference of light within those two slits. And what this means is that actually when we look at a double slit pattern, we sort of look before and we sort of assumed we would just have the same intensity all the way along. But this isn't actually the case, as you can see here. So we can see that um, our double slit is what's causing these red maxima here. So it's causing um, this sort of rapid oscillation in the pattern. But this blue, what we call an envelope that contains the whole pattern, is caused by our single slit interference. So as well as having um, just the double slit interference, it's all contained within an envelope of the single slit pattern. And this means um, that we can sort of consider both effects on the light. And um, we'll talk more about this um, in an example question. So um, here we're told the graph shows the intensity um, in arbitrary units, not SI units. So what they mean by that is just it's an intensity scale. It's not particularly tied with any kind of unit um, of the diffraction pattern produced by coherent monochromatic light incident on the double slit. The wavelength of the light is 510 nanometers. So we're first asked to calculate the slit width. So slit width is to do with our um, single slit interference pattern. So for, to find this, we're going to want to be using our theta, oh, sorry about that, um, theta is equal to lambda over B equation, and we want to find beta B, which is just going to be lambda over theta. So our single slit interference pattern is the bit that causes this blue envelope. So our theta, as we said for this, is going to be the width of the central maximum, so it's going to be from 0 to 0 0.1, so we have a theta of 0 0.1. We're told that lambda is 510 nanometers. So um, B, 510 nanometers is 5.1 times 10 to the minus 7 meters over 0 0.1, which is going to give us 5.1 times 10 to the minus 10 to the minus 6 meters, which is 5.1 micrometers. Okay, and then part B asks us to find the separation of the slits. So the separation of the slits is the thing we um, find using our double slit interference, which is our S is lambda capital D over small d. The small problem you might think of at first is that actually, well, we've got an angle in radians on our x-axis. How does that kind of convert? And what we can actually think about here is that when we are looking at our pattern, um, so imagine you've got your screen and you've got your slits here and we've got D and we've got um, S um, which is going to be your sort of distance here and you might have an angle of theta here um, you you're, you could sort of roughly approximately say that um, sine of theta is going to be our opposite which is um, what we're calling S over our hypotenuse and clearly this is our hypotenuse and it's not quite D um, but it's going to be roughly the same as D because D is much much greater than S so we can see that sine theta is roughly the same as S over capital D. And actually, when we use very small values of um, sine of theta, we can actually just use theta instead. And um, it's roughly the same. So what we actually get here is that sine of theta is S over D, which is roughly the same as theta. So what we can now do is replace this in our equation. So we could say that S over D is lambda over little d, which is theta. We want to find little d. So little d is going to be lambda over theta, much like before. So our wavelength is the same as we had a moment ago, 5.1 times 10 to the minus 7 metres. Um, and theta, in this case, is going to be the separation between those red maxima. So it's going to be the bit caused by the double slit. So it's a little bit tricky to read off, um, but if you count, there are 10 um, maxima before 0 0.1. So the separation of each one must be 0 0.01. And this gives us um, 5.1 times 10 to the minus 5 metres, which is 51 micrometres. So what this tells us about this setup is that the separation of the slits is 10 times bigger than the width of each slit. So you can see the dominant effect here is going to be to do, caused by um, that um, oscillation due to the um, separation of the slits, because that's going to be greater. But there is still going to be an effect caused by the width of one of those individual slits. All right, so last sort of type of um, interference we need to look at is that caused by diffraction gratings. 
So we talked about how if you've got a double slit, you get this envelope and you get this oscillation within the envelope. Or well, what about if you've got three or four or a thousand slits? Right, you're going to get something kind of similar. We're still going to have this envelope, but the pattern within it is going to be slightly different. And so the interference is going to be more complicated because instead of just having light from two slits interfering, you've got multiple slits that are all interfering with each other. And what this means is as well as getting these kind of maxima here, you get these secondary maxima in between. So you see for this three slit pattern, for every one of these high maxima, you get one of these small maxima in between, but for five slits, you get three of these maxima in between. So the number of these little maxima um, in between each major maximum is gonna be sort of the number of slits minus two. The equation we can use to describe this is N lambda is D sine theta. Here, N is um, the order of the maximum. Um, and d, um, or lambda, of course, is our wavelength. d is our slit separation. And sine of theta is much like the theta we talked about for the single slit pattern. Um, obviously, we're taking the sine of it this time. And this means that we don't always have to just consider small angles. We can consider a range of angles. Okay, so let's look at a question on this. Um, so we're told light of wavelength 480 nanometers produces a second order maximum at an angle of 32.2 degrees to the incident direction. Determine the number of lines per millimeter of the diffraction grating. So we've got a diffraction grating. We're going to want to use our um, equation that describes diffraction gratings, which is this n lambda is equal to d sine of theta. We want to know the number of lines per millimetre, which is a really common way um, sort of diffraction gratings are labelled and sold. Um, so to find the number of lines per millimetre, what we first need to know is the distance between each line. So to do that, we can use d is n lambda over sine theta. So n is the order of the maximum. We're looking at the second order maximum, which we're told um, is at 32.2 degrees. So n is 2. Um, lambda is um, 480 nanometers, so 4.8 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. And sine of theta is going to be sine of 32.2. And if you plug that in your calculator, you should get about 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Okay, so that's the separation of each slit. That's not quite what the question's asking us for, though. We want to know the number of slits in one millimeter. And to do this, we're going to need to take a millimeter and divide it by um, sort of the separation between each slit. So um, n per millimeter, let's call it, is going to be um, 10 to the minus 3 of a meter, which is a millimeter, divided by 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6 meters which you're going to get out as 555 um, slits per millimetre. Okay, so when you're looking at these sorts of questions, obviously the first thing you're going to want to do is identify what kind of um, problem you've got to work out which equation you're going to be using um, for that sort of setup of different slits. So this, of course, was a diffraction problem, but we've looked at a diffraction and grating pattern problem even, um, but we've also looked at single slit problems and double slit problems. So it's always worth making sure you're using the correct equation for the connect correct scenario. All right, so that's everything um, for this video. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you're interested in getting any online tutoring with one of Len Turner's physics tutors, please check out the website and more information can be found there. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.